GNC 595. It's Friday, July 23rd, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a prime of the tech podcast network. Thank goodness it's Friday. Got a great show for you. Uh, lots to talk about. It's been a great week. It really, really has, and it's shaping up to be a great weekend. You know what comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go, no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. Or go flight. Microphone. Or go flight. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go flight. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Button, button, who's got the button? Four. There is no pause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking Greater Oahu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show and uh, it's a very windy, nice, cool evening in in Hawaii. Uh, the neighbors are having a party. I, I just, <laughs> it's kind of weird that uh, they never have parties, but uh, must be a special occasion next door. So they're having fun. So we'll see if that uh, drifts through here during the show. But uh, I want to give a warm welcome to the Ohana, all of you that are longtime listeners of the show and viewers, of course. Thanks uh, for being part of the Ohana, being part of the family here at, uh, at Geek News Central. Of course, we want to welcome new listeners from 165 countries worldwide that uh, either listen or tune into the show via Roku, via whatever device or on the web or however you get us. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being here. And uh, make sure you get signed up for the newsletter. The newsletter contains all the content that I'm going to talk about tonight including links back to all of the articles that have either been submitted by you or found by me. So make sure you get signed up for the newsletter. That way you won't miss a single thing that's going on with the show. And uh, as I talk about the content and you're listening to it, uh, you know, not necessarily live, but listen to it later, uh, you can follow along or, or pick the highlights out of there. Well, I tell you, it's been um, a busy, 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 busy week. Uh, it's just like, it's Friday already, and I was like, whoa, it's, where did the week go? Um, had an absolutely great meeting with, uh, with a vendor, uh, a couple of vendors, and I'm under an NDA, two NDAs like you would not even believe. <laughs> so I really can't say too much about uh, what, the, uh, what the meetings were about. Um, only suffice to say that it is in the OTT space. <laughs> and um, that's really all I can say, except that they were great meetings. I'm really excited. I'm energized. Um, last one was uh, this afternoon, and uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a very interesting fall, for a better, for a better term. And uh, we'll talk more about it when I can. But um, it is not related to the pop box, and we'll talk about that a little later in the show. And my review and uh, receive receipt of a pop box, we'll talk about that a little later in the show. But for those of you that are watching us on Roku or watching on the Boxy, hey, thanks for uh, for checking us out. Tell your friends and family members about the show, and uh, get them on a get them a Roku device, or because they're hey, they make great gifts, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, that's the best way to uh, really catch the show from the big screen. And I've uh, been getting a lot more reports in from folks on the Roku. Thanks for watching. And Boxy, when their box comes out, I think we'll see a, a big increase there. Um, do want to take care of a little business here, of course, as we get into the show. And uh, one thing that I want to um, have you guys uh, be made aware of is that the folks over at uh, GoDaddy have now launched their uh, .co domains. So uh, if you're looking, if, you're, if you have a company or you think that the .co is going to work good for you, um, the domains are a little expensive. Uh, they're $29.95 for the first year. I don't know what the renewal price is going to be, but .co is now available. And uh, get the name you really want because the land rush is, is definitely on uh, for the .co domains. As a matter of fact, I went looked for three or four of the domains already at, that I wanted, and they were already gone. And I actually even got uh, solicited from 
a secondary party trying to sell me podcast.co. And uh, I was like, unless it has the, the M in front of it, I don't want that one. So uh, check it out. Of course, uh, dot coms, of course, are always available uh, at a great price by using my ComSale uh, promo code. And, of course, uh, hosting accounts, whether it be uh, a shared, dedicated, virtual dedicated server, they've got it. they got a great build a website for 5 bucks on their uh, on their website. Check that out. Of course, you can sell products online um, as well. So definitely check GoDaddy out, and uh, I'll have a link up in the show notes tonight, geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy to get all of my codes so that uh, you can say big when you're over there shopping with them. And uh, we're being close here to really the end of the month, so anything that you can do, bring my way, business my way in the in the GoDaddy space. We definitely appreciate it. But uh, thanks to GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here at Geek News Central. Make sure you get over there and get that .co. And also, as a, remember, as a reminder, pick up their iPhone, their um, Blueberry app, their Android app, and uh, that way you can manage your domains and buy them real, just quickly, um, really, with your, uh, with your mobile device. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, the Insider, of course, the Insider is for those of you that ha- are basically contributing to the show every month. The Insider has been recorded. It hasn't been distributed. <laughs> the last uh, after I got done recording the uh, the last show, I uh, basically went into insider mode and I, I covered a number of topics. And I guess I can give a little taste. And they actually the wind's blowing here so much. I don't know if I'm going to get wind into the back of the mic or not. If I do, I, I apologize. I thought I had the window cranked down far enough, but it's whipping pretty good. But um, talking about tweaking the show and uh, talk about the process of how the show's put together and finding some balance for it, talking about video, talk about uh, how I nitpick the show to death, um, about going back to school and, you know, investing in the show. There's a whole bunch of stuff here that gets uh, gets pretty deep into um, the psychic and how I go about continuing to try and improve the show and, and move forward. But uh, it talks about some challenges. So, again, that's going to be coming to all of you that are an insider, and uh, hopefully after the show tonight, I can move that to online and make that available for all of you and get an email out, and uh, that way you can, can grab it and watch it before the, uh, the weekend. I have not gotten any feedback from any of you that sent envelopes for swag packages. All the swag package envelopes went out, and I'm a little bit... I, I'm going to assume at this time that because we had the break in with the vehicle right around the same time that there was some funny business going on in the neighborhood, that the night before when I mailed the swag packages, um, I'm going to assume those had been stolen. And that's the only thing I can think of. And if, I really, it's very, very important because this would have been taken out of the mailbox, and which would really up the ante here to a federal crime. So please, if you have received your swag package, please email me at geeknews at gmail.com and say, Todd, I got it. And it's really important that you do that for me so that I know because I don't want to go cry wolf on this one because this is a big one. And I know uh, several of you personally that um, have gotten, were supposed to have gotten packages. I'll email you guys directly tomorrow to, to really double check on this. But if you were if you were signed up, you'd have sent in envelopes in to get a swag package please, please, please tell me that you have gotten it or not. And uh, that at least will tell me what way I need to proceed um, because it's it's a big deal. And uh, this all happened right around the same period as when all these all those uh, swag packages went in the mail. Um, I want to thank the folks over at Make Switch Direct. That campaign has wrapped up. So uh, we're, we're back to our regular two sponsors here on the show. But uh, I want to thank Matrix Direct for their run. And for those of you that checked out their services, I appreciate that very much. Um, July on this money raising, this money raising venture that I did for July has largely been, you know, not so overwhelmingly positive. <laughs> and I had no idea going into it what we would see uh, for the month. And I, you know, I figured wh- whatever would happen would happen. Uh, those that have donated, I definitely appreciate it. And uh, but otherwise, it's just one of those things that hmm. I guess uh, that was something that probably didn't work. So, you know, I'm willing to share with you guys what works and what doesn't work. But definitely the fundraising thing did not work. So it's okay. That's what uh, we have sponsors for the show. And uh, just things will move a little bit slower than what I had planned. But that uh, that's okay. That's 
um, that's part of the game here, and it's part of the challenge of continuing to uh, to grow the audience out. But uh, yeah, you know, you guys have always been honest with you and telling you which way the show's going and and things that have worked and that haven't worked. Um, obviously, the longtime sponsors with GoDaddy and with Citrix being here as a sponsor for a long time, um, that has been very successful, and in uh, they would not continue to renew um, if the, if it has not or had not been. So. Um, Anyway, thanks for uh, you guys' continued support on that space as well. All right, let me look here at the list. GeekNewsCentral.com forward slash offers to check out all our offers. Of course, uh, the insider is at GeekNewsCentral.com forward slash insider. And then if you want to get something at the Ohana store, CafePress.com forward slash Ohana store. And again, send your pictures in for stuff that you picked up at the Ohana store. And I'm actually looking for a folder here on the hard drive. There we go. And that's, oh, you know, nothing like uh, poor planning before the beginning of uh, beginning of the show here. And, of course, um, I guess that's it. So favorite the website on Facebook. That's always important as well. So uh, let's get into the content here in just a second. But before, let's make sure we got enough money to keep the lights on. You know, companies of all sizes must always look for a new way to cut costs. And the economy continues to be a in a situation where we don't know if it's going to climb out of the doldrums that it's in or if we're going to, you know, kind of seep into a second depression or a recession, and we really don't want that. But so we know that every dollar saved helps the bottom line, and that's why I recommend the web conferencing solution for your business known as GoToMeeting. You know, it helps improve overall business communications and efficiencies, and really the easiest, most affordable is, of course, the product by Citrix, GoToMeeting. Reduce time on the road by presenting training and de or demonstrating online, improve conference calls by collaborating in real time sh by sharing your screen, and GoToMeeting is the best way to increase your productivity cost. Again, as a listener of this show, you can get a free 30-day trial by going to gotomeeting.com forward slash tech podcast. That's gotomeeting.com forward slash tech podcast. And as a reminder, they've got that cool iPad app out. And uh, that thing was fun. It's fun to use. It is very, very cool. Um, actually, my family and I had planned on going to uh, to the beach in the morning. All right, spending all day at the beach tomorrow. And I had uh, blocked out the time in my schedule to uh, to make that happen. My kids are all done with all their summer activities that go on here in, in Hawaii. And uh, we're all set to go. And at just about 15 minutes before the show started tonight, our contractor that comes in has been doing work on the house from time to time. Um, he says, hey, I can come tomorrow all day. And we're, we both looked at each other. So I'm going to do what I was planning to do on Saturday tomorrow while he's here. And then Saturday we're going to the beach with the kids. So it just kind of... It screwed everything up, but uh, you know it's like one of those situations where you gotta you gotta make hay when the sun shines. When he's available, you gotta let him work. So uh, hopefully the uh, rest of the door and the trims and all that stuff will go in tomorrow and will be done. But she's already planning the next round of uh, home improvements. And fellas, is do you guys like have these discussions with your significant others? And when it comes to things that you're going to do in the house. And I guess I'm not a design person at all, and I have no way to vision how something's going to look. So I'm the type of guy that says, okay, can I just go do it? <laughs> do one, in other words, do one window. Then we'll look and see how it looks. And if that looks good, we'll go with that with the rest of the house. And, you know, I it, it's just the way I work. I guess, are you guys the rest of the way like that? I just, you know, I just can't vision stuff. I have to see it. So, um, but anyway, there was enough on that. Let's get into the tech. All right, um, if you're using Safari, this is important here, okay? Um, security team has found a exploit where if you are using the autofill, basically the autofill feature in Safari, and you visit a website that has the key to this exploit, what will happen uh, is that they'll be able to suck your information right out of the... Uh, right out of the browser and uh, this is big this is a uh, you know not only is uh, <laughs> the uh, the folks at Apple's um, spying on us with our phones and location-based services but now they're giving information to uh, to uh, hackers using the uh, section in the autofill web forms so 
uncheck this block in Safari, if you go into the settings and go into autofill, where it says autofill web forms using info from my address book card, uncheck that, okay? Uncheck that. That way you'll be okay until they get this thing uh, uh, fixed. But, uh, yeah, it's not too hard of a hack to to uh, really uh, implement either. So uh, be careful out there with uh, Safari and with this feature uh, enabled. You know, one thing that we saw at uh, CES 2010 is we saw, you know, mobile TV everywhere. And that was, the you know, the kind of the buzz of CES 2010. And, you know, I was kind of like, eh. And I know that in Japan, CES actually... Okay, I want to skip the ad. The uh, in Japan, the TV on the mobile phones is 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 kind of big. So I figured they thought this was going to be big here, but Qualcomm is not real happy with uh, MediaFlow. Uh, MediaFlow is the Flow TV business that they are partnered with, and um, they are in in basically in discussions with a number of their partners, deciding which way to go of this and really what they want is uh, Qualcomm wants a divorce. Look at that huge ad. Anyway, Qualcomm wants a divorce from, uh, from MediaFlow. So the question on this is, and I guess this is a question for all of you for the first comment on tonight's show, is are, do you want to watch TV on your mobile device? Well, if you think about the, uh, the bandwidth <laughs> required, and I know there's some systems that where you don't have to have bandwidth being used. It actually comes in via a signal over the air, um, you know, separate from your normal data stuff. Um, do you guys want to watch TV? Do you guys want to watch TV on your mobile device? Or is that something you reserve for your lazy boy and sit in front of your, you know, in front of your television set at home? For me, uh, I, I don't get it. I don't get the whole TV on mobile, but uh, I don't know. Maybe someone out there will disagree with me and uh, provide me some input here. But uh, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. Geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365. Hey, the folks over at PC World have a pretty cool article on top 12 spy gadgets. And uh, this is these are all kinds of uh, very, very little naughty uh, toys, for a better word. And some of them are really not uh, toys uh, for the price of them. They've got uh, information on remote monitoring, spy cams, cellular jammers, key loggers. That scares me right there. And then a variety of other things on some other pages. We're talking about GPS trackers, document scanners, anti, and then they have some stuff for anti-bugging protection. But it just goes in here, and uh, if you're looking to get in the private detective business, <laughs> the uh, folks at PC World may have the, uh, the latest gear that you'll want to buy uh, for that business. But um, as devices get smaller, it definitely raises uh, some concern on how basically we're being monitored, watched by people that are outside of law enforcement. Um, it does make you sit back and go, hmm. And, you know, I just looked at this little uh, key logger, and really, if you weren't paying attention, if you didn't have access to the back of your computer at all times, someone could stick one of these on your USB port, then basically plug your keyboard into it, and you'd be owned right there. $71. It's a PS2 key logger. $71, and someone could capture everything that you're typing. And as an employer, I think I'd be a little bit worried, too, that uh, – industrial spying and that type of stuff that goes on. Um, I, I don't know how good the uh, the ability is to detect this type of stuff, but, you know, as we're going to talk about in an article here in a minute, you know, industrial spying is big right now. You know, you don't, the military, of course, has this huge, uh, huge issue, uh, or not huge issue, but they have a huge concern to keep things secret. But, you know, companies at the same token have the same uh, same concerns. Now, in a story kind of related to spying, there was a um, the the federal government has charged a couple in uh, in Michigan with uh, stealing hybrid car information. Of course, it was as could be expected, uh, two Chinese individuals that uh, had been charged with a conspiracy to possess trade secrets without authorization, unauthorized possession of trade secrets, and wire fraud. 
And then one of the individuals also um, charged with obstruction of justice. I think that's a charge. It just goes on, um, just goes, you know, with any of these types of uh, cases. But uh, General Motors is basically saying that these individuals have stolen documents worth $40 million. So from May, December 2003 to May of 2006, these two have uh, taken as much information from General Motors relating to hybrid vehicles and fed them to uh, the Chinese. And it's assumably the Chinese government or Chinese firm. And um, these individuals were actually uh, working at GM and they copied these documents uh, after they were, I guess, re uh, laid off or something. But, uh, you know, it just goes to show you that uh, even the copying of documents is uh, is alive and well, but uh, GM is uh, really worried. And obviously what happens is the Chinese, if they can't make it, they steal it and they copy it. Now, this may make some people mad in the audience, but it's just the way things are, and I'm sure it works in reverse too. But, um, you know, if you can't build it, steal it, right? That's the, that, I guess that's the uh, the ongoing uh, the ongoing issue there, but we'll see. Hey, have you heard about this, um, just moving on here, have you heard about this WordPress battle that's going on? And this has gotten, it's, it's actually uh, has been, making a several rounds in the news and I, I really haven't talked too much about it but uh, Matt the creator of WordPress is uh, basically saying that anyone that's creating templates for WordPress those templates must be uh, released under a GPL license and this specifically because WordPress itself is um, has the GPL license associated with it as well and the the maker of the thesis, T-H-E-S-I-S, -E thesis theme, I guess he's a very popular uh, theme creator. And I, I went over and looked at his themes and kind of understood why he's gotten the type of uh, press he has because he, he makes some pretty good interactive uh, WordPress themes. He's basically having a big battle with, uh, with Matt. And basically what WordPress is basically, uh, they're going to threaten to sue him and uh, unless this guy changes his uh, templates to GPL. Now, the thing I guess that bothers me here is that if you're, and, and there's, there's all kinds of arguments on this, and there's two, two camps, either those that say it should be and those that say it shouldn't, but here's, here's the crux of the matter. How does WordPress continue to advance if you don't have guys doing innovative stuff, building cool templates that they can sell that they're not going to get they're not going to worry about getting have the code ripped off from them um and i don't know if that's the full crux of it but this is going to turn into a major ugly battle before it's all over it's already ugly it's been a war of words up to this point um but you know they're not asking people to work for free you can still get paid for your work of creating templates but the key is he wants the uh the templates released as uh, um, as GPL. Now that goes for plugins. Uh, plugins are included. Our PowerPress plugin that uh, we have uh, spent lit invested literally thousands of dollars in encoding time um, is licensed under GPL. Um, that is uh, required, and I think there, I don't think there's any plugin developers that have not licensed their plugins under GPL. So what does that mean? That means someone can take our PowerPress plugin and spin off their own version, um, it would be pretty cheesy to do that, but they could. And it's just because of the way the GPL license works. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how this battle ends up being. And it really, essentially what it boils down to is it's saying that the, the WordPress theme is PHP. And it's not necessarily a, a, a t it's like not a traditional HTML template, although it has elements of that. So uh, only time will tell. Hey, Microsoft has uh, made a major change in its disclosure policy as according to, uh, for handling vulnerabilities. They're moving to a model that they're calling coordinated vulnerability disclosure, in which the researcher, in other words, the person who has found the vulnerability, and Microsoft work together to verify the vulnerability and then allow time for Microsoft to apply a patch. Now... The philosophy also recognizes, and this is what Microsoft is saying, that if there are already attacks happening, uh, zero day, you know, zero day, zero day attacks, 
then it may be necessary to release details of the flaw even before a patch is ready uh, to prevent uh, you know, a major impact to people's infrastructure. So the new strategy relies on researchers to report vulnerabilities either directly to a vendor or to a trusted third party, such as CERT, who will then report it to the vendor. The finder and the vendor would then agree on a disclosure timeline and work from there. So this is, I think this is a good idea by Microsoft to do it this way. This, I think this is, a, this is very smart, but I think Microsoft's challenge here is that they're going to have to you know, work smart and be quick. They're going to have to, for a better word, they're going to have to make sure that they um, don't waste time in getting a patch put in. And if they can do that effectively, then I think they'll, I think they'll be, I think they'll be all right in implementing this new policy. Hey, NPR has got a great art. You know, I've been finding lately a lot of good stuff on NPR. They have upped their game in news reporting. And maybe it's just because I didn't follow NPR enough in the past to, um, you know, to really know, but. NPR's got a story about um, a project going on right now where they're driving a vehicle from Italy to China with no driver. Now, this is pretty cool. A team of Italian engineers launched what has been billed as the longest ever test of a driverless vehicle in a three-month, 8,000-mile road trip from Italy to China. Now, they're saying this is uh, they're going to have two people in the vehicle. They're going to be there to assist in case there's an issue. Um, he says that the trip can't be done completely without a driver because in any situation, you have to have some sort of um, interaction. They're going to be a three-vehicle convoy. But um, this is going to be able to test their technology developed by a company called VizLab and um, in their artificial and intelligent systems to see how it, uh, you know, how it reacts, how it works, what they can do to to make it better. So if they get more information on this, we'll definitely talk about it later in the show and we'll probably be some more stories about it. Hey, you know, what do you think about this lawsuit um, against Facebook from this developer who says he now owns like 80 some percent of the company? I, you know, if I was uh, Zuckerberg, I think I'd be a little bit nervous because there's all kinds of things that keep coming up about Facebook's past. There was this lawsuit, you know, these other college students that say this was part of my idea. And then I, I guess they, I don't know what they did. They settled with those guys or if that lawsuit was uh, thrown out. Now you got this new guy that's come out and say, hey, um, I, you know, I, I, I've, you know I've, been no, I've been hiding out for six years, but yet I got this contract that says, you know, that he uh, agreed to certain terms. Um, and here's the thing that is kind of scary. I, I've, think about six years back, okay? Let's go back six years. That's, uh, for me, 2004, if I'm doing the math right, right? I can remember very clearly everything that I did in 2004. Well, partially because podcasting started. That was the year I got hurt. I spent a lot of time in Waco, Texas, babysitting airplanes. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that happened in 2004. I was uh, um, overseas in the Middle East. And, you know, it was just a very busy year. Now, if I'm a young guy and I'm going to college and I want to start a website, First of all, a thousand bucks. If I'm going to spend a thousand bucks as a college student, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a college student to spend to do this design. Don't you think you would remember? Wouldn't you remember the terms that uh, you had made with this individual? Could you? I could remember. I think I could very easily remember a contract that I would have made with someone involving a thousand dollars especially when I was his age um, when I was his age of course times have changed in the amount of money a thousand dollars was a huge amount of cash but most college students are broke you know they already have time to eat and have beer money let alone a thousand dollars for a website so when Diane Sawyer questioned him on this and he says he doesn't think Facebook was part of the contract doesn't think doesn't think you have got to be kidding me if it was me i'd be absolutely not that contract was for this doing this specific thing non-related to facebook this to me smells really really bad now here's my here's my here's my guess on this this guy is going to make a lot of money i 
predict that he is going to cash out on this to make they're going to make him go away with a big fat check. So that's a question. What do you guys think? Does it smell funny to you? Even though they're saying, oh, this guy has nothing to do. It's a fake. It's a forgery, blah, blah, blah. If I'd have made a contract with someone and Diane Sawyer asked me that question, you can absolutely guarantee I would know the answer to that. That sounds like a political answer to me, or that sounds like a, a an answer that someone would give trying to evade. And this is, this is my opinion, folks. Is he evading? I, I personally think he is. Um, will anything happen? I don't know. I might be wrong, but it just, in my personal opinion, smells funny. It really does. Okay, here's something that t today just blew my mind. Don't we have Democrats in the House? We've got Democrats in the Senate, and we have a Democrat in the, the White House. Okay, so we got... They control Senate, House, and the executive branch. So a House version of a NASA authoriz authorization bill released this week would sharply limit funding for a number of initiatives that the administration's budget proposal for NASA, in other words, that they're going to limit funding for a number of initiatives in the administration's budget proposal for NASA while supporting continued government development of spacecraft and launch vehicles. The bill would authorize NASA at the same time Overall level, in other words, but they're going to give them the same amount of money, but would only provide $50 million a year for five years for commercial crew development, plus $100 million a year for loan guarantees. Now, the White House has requested $6 billion over five years for the effort. So the bill would also call on NASA to continue to develop a crewed spacecraft and launch a vehicle closely derived from the Constellation program the administration sought to cancel. Now, the bill does support an extension to the International Space Station operation to 2020 as requested. I saw this today, and I was like, whoa, holy cow. So what was really has happened here is the House has basically, if I, now, if I'm reading this wrong, someone tell me here, but it tell, it, this to me says the House is telling the President to go pack sand. Now, I thought that he'd lay, you would, this just kind of blows me away. We've already got all these other bills through the way that the, the president wants it. So how did this change? Hmm. What do you guys think? Geeknews at gmail.com. What do you guys think? It, 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 I, unless I'm missing something here, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but uh, they have basically undone through this appropriations bill. Of course, remember we didn't have a budget this year. The House never did a budget, so all funding for all programs are going to be through appropriation bills. So you know, you and I can have a budget for our House, but the House of Representatives did not. I repeat, did not have a budget this year. They just have appropriation bills, so they don't really didn't lay out what they're going to spend because they're just going to spend. So this, this is to me is, uh, good. well, I personally think that, uh, NASA should continue to do some of the things that they're very good at. And I agree that there should be some commercialization. So there's a trade off there, but they definitely did not give the president what he wanted in this bill. Now, whether or not the administration will sign the, appropriations bill that's a different story so we'll see what happens i'm sure there's more to come on this i'd like to hear you guys' feedback on that as well geeknews at gmail.com this is the second of second articles tonight i'd like, really like to hear feedback on from all of you geeknews at gmail.com just from a perspective of what do you guys think that they should be spending money on i don't you know let's we can leave the politics out but uh where do you think that uh, our tax dollars should be going to to fund nasa and in which in which way should we be going? All right, Panasonic is, and this is an article over on Engadget. Let me go ahead and put the link up here. Actually, the the article up. The uh, folks at uh, Panasonic apparently are going to be coming out with a consumer level 3D camcorder. Now, I priced the uh, 
pro versions of the camcorder, and let me tell you, <laughs> uh, it's going to be probably about five years before I buy one of those. Oh my goodness, a single camera I think was like twenty grand for a single three D camera, and uh, uh, you know I thought the the cost on the TriCaster was horrible, but uh, for a single camera twenty grand, I can buy I can buy four pro cameras for that price. Um, so if they're going to be coming out with a home version or a consumer level 3D camcorder, what are the trade-offs going to be? If they're going from 20 large on a pro camera to, you know, the, a 3D camcorder is going to have to probably be under 1500 bucks for consumers. So we'll see. We'll see how this, how this comes out. How many of you bought a 3D TV? You know, how many of you done that? All right, next article up, uh, Microsoft Microsoft has reported $4.5 billion in profit. So the naysayers that say it was, were saying that Apple was going to out uh, outperform in uh, profits more than Microsoft were stymied today. And really what uh, they made a billion plus more than in profit than, uh, than, than Apple did. But uh, this is a pretty big number here. Um, 16.04 billion in revenue, 4.5 billion dollars in profit. Um, they had a huge number of Windows 7 orders, 100, and it just uh, goes on and on. They had pretty good, uh, pretty good quarter, and the um, overall, uh, they had a great year. Now they're projecting a uh, pretty big year next year too. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But all kinds of stats here. I'm not going to get into that. They had their earnings call. We don't need to go in that too deep. How many of you seen this uh, this band aid for the iPhone 4? You know what? This was genius. Two people sit around one day and said, "Oh, let's just put a band aid on our phone, and uh, so that we'll, you know, we're not going to touch that spot, so we don't uh, lose uh, uh, lose signal." Well, they built these little band. They're selling these little band aids, and they can't. Uh, they can't fill orders fast enough. People are crazy about them. But I love this sticker. And you'll have to look at the, those of you that are listening to the show, I have to look at the link. It's it's another article of our end gadget where the basically the sticker says end call. <laughs> Remove to end call. <laughs> and uh, But uh, they made all kind of cutesy little band-aids for the corner of the iPhone 4. And this is, uh, this is I, I must admit, I'm going to have to go out and order. <laughs> Some of these band-aids, so when I pick up the iPhone 4, um, then I'll have that available to put on there. And, uh, you know, if nothing else, is a conversation piece. So, But, uh, you know, a couple of folks uh, thought this up, and they're selling them like crazy. Our surprise, surprise, those of you that are Verizon users, again, those of you that are Verizon users and are on data plans, Verizon said we are going to end unlimited bandwidth because what they're finding, shockingly, is Droid users are gobbling up as much as five times the amount of data of other Verizon smartphones. <laughs> so uh, they're going to follow suit like uh, AT&T, and they're going to curb its unlimited data plans. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what they come up with. But uh, they are very surprised that uh, the, uh, the number of people using the uh, Droid X are, uh, are, are basically... Uh, uh, using five times as much data. Surprise, surprise. You know, you're going to give us these phones like that. They have great product, you know, great features. Of course, people are going to use them. And the Droid X, is, it's a screen, is huge. It's humongous. So it just, you know, it just uh, encourages people to use it like a computer. I know some of you are fans of Stitcher. I'm not a big, super big fan of Stitcher. I, I run a few other programs to download. Uh, and really, part of it is because I spent so much time in airplanes if I haven't synced my uh, phone uh, to iTunes, then I basically have another program that will download stuff to my uh, phone when I'm basically in a spot where I can, uh, you know, leave the phone, the app running for a little bit. But Stitcher now will run in the background. And so long as you've got a good connection, uh, you can uh, listen to most podcasts. The, the challenge I have with Stitcher is trying to find some podcasts they they they've got it uh, some stuff is just buried and uh, they definitely play preference to some of the more popular tech shows you were able to I was able to find my show but I wasn't able to find like our tech podcast network weekly and they just couldn't find them 
Uh, but uh, you can run this in the background. Just remember, you're using bandwidth to do that. And uh, don't bust your uh, your 2 gig cap because you listen to too much in the background with uh, on the data plan, and you're going to do exactly that. So that was an article over on Geek News Central, uh, one of our contributing authors over there, uh, Jeffrey. Um, Susan Bell, boy, oh, boy, she is not at all happy with AT&T. And uh, I have to admit, there are times when I, I have my, uh, can have my fill of them too. She uh, basically it's continued to have signal issues. And she you know, basically can see the tower. She thinks she's supposed to have a good 3G connection, and she ends up being on edge. And uh, she just doesn't understand. She's spending all this money with them, yet uh, the reliability of the service is not good. Now, the challenge, I, you know what makes me mad, is that... I'll have great signal coverage, and then I'll load a page on my iPhone, and it'll just sit there and spin and spin and spin and spin and spin and never load the page. At least it could do is time out and say, I can't reach the page or I'm having trouble. But no, it just teases you with that little spinning you know, object up in the top left-hand corner of the phone. Um, when it works, it works. But when it don't, it don't. It's just you know, it, that simple. And uh, but this is a good article by uh, again Susabel, one of our contributing writers at uh, at GNC. All right, let's talk about my reaction or my initial opinion here of the pop box. I ordered my pop box on uh, a Friday. It was delivered on Monday. I didn't get it hooked up until Tuesday or Wednesday. Maybe it was last night. I didn't get it hooked up until Wednesday. And. Um, one thing I didn't realize when I ordered the thing, I didn't realize they had two models. I didn't, reali I, I didn't realize they sold a wireless and a wired. <laughs> and I had gotten the wired. And uh, I could have uh, gotten the wireless for $20 more. So instead, I'm getting stuck with another uh, 20 bucks plus $11 shipping because nothing gets free shipped to free to Hawaii from Amazon unless you spend a bunch of money. So... All total, I think my pop box is going to be like one hundred and sixty dollars when it could have been one forty nine irregardless um hooked it up and uh, run a cable to it, got it hooked up to the big t v and I was really excited because I'd seen this thing in action at South by Southwest, talked to the folks at c e s Sadly, we had not gotten approval to be a developer yet with them, and that just came through uh last week, I guess, so really no time to put the uh, channel together. So when I loaded the, turned the machine on, and immediately did a, before it even did anything, it did a firmware update, which took uh, six, seven, eight minutes, rebooted, came up, and of course it wanted to know where all my media was. And really, I've got all my media player stuff already wired up. All I really wanted this thing for was to see the apps and how the interactivity of it was. So I just basically bypassed that s segment. And then when I went to the apps or the channel section, 10 channels. That's it. And I was like, where's the rest of the channels? A revision three was on there, YouTube. Uh, some thing that uh, the Sybase people have come up with, two or three apps there, but hardly any apps from any third parties. So I was like, I was flabbergasted. No Netflix, even our competitor, Mediafly, who's on a lot of devices. They're not on the device. I'm like, what's the story with that? And I'm really kind of, I'm basically, they've sent an email over to the CEO of Mediafly. Him and I exchange emails from time to time. I said, you know, why are you not on the pop box? And no reply from him yet. So I'm wondering here. This is the thing that has me concerned. And the pop box people haven't re reacted to my article. If they have, they haven't been willing to leave a comment or drop me an email. But... When I talked to them at South by Southwest, they really indicated that they wanted to have upper level content. They wanted to have very professional. They wanted this to have content that would be um, highly refined, a true entertainment device with, you know, uh, content, that I guess, how, how it was implied, a step above new media. And uh, that kind of made me kind of leery at the time. And I really kind of just, you know, I didn't know if the guy that I was talking to knew what he was talking about, but. Not seeing the Mediafly app on there made me go, did they pull it because they were worried about the quality of the content or what? And uh, I loaded the channel from Revision 3, and it, it was 
good. The content, the menu system was nice. Uh, the video rendered nice. Um, pretty pleased with the performance. Went to the, went to the YouTube app. Played with uh, YouTube for a little bit. Tried to load my channel. Could not get my video to play on YouTube. Uh, of course, it doesn't help that my video that I send to YouTube is 900 meg. So I'm sure that probably had something to do with it. Um, other channels and videos loaded fine and played okay. Uh, video was pretty uh, pretty good. The, the actual quality of the video stream was was fine. Um, but talking with my guys today, I'm really wondering what uh, you know. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at the SDK and see how hard it is or easy it is to develop for this thing. Um, I'll be honest with you. The Roku's gave us back huge, huge returns. Huge. Uh, we can't even. I can't even really calculate at this point the value that we've gotten back from the Roku. But it was a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money to develop that those channels, and um, just because of the programming time. Now, if the Roku, if the Popbox turns out to have require that high of investment, um, then I'm going to have to really think about where we're going to lay our money at. And um, uh, you know, we're definitely going to be developing for Voodoo. That is uh, right on the top of the priority list to go, and then these other two vendors that I can't talk about uh, will be in that same mix along with Google TV when that's forthcoming. So um, I don't know. What do you, if any of you got in a pop box, let me know what you think about it. But at this time, I don't know if I can recommend it. Um, if you're just a gadget geek and you got to have it, okay, fair warning. Uh, but uh, boy, I don't know at this point. We'll see. I know they're Working hard to get the bugs fixed, and I'll continue to watch. I'll keep you guys updated, and then I'll give you some feedback on development costs to get into this device. Boxy's not too hard to develop to, so you know that's I think where Boxy's going to have a big advantage as well. All right, over on NewScientist.com, I've got a good article here about microplane perched to po feed off power lines. This is this is really cool. Basically, they're in a lab doing some tests, and the uh, the airplane. Uh, flies right up to the power line, kind of comes up and goes into a stall and hooks onto it. And uh, they're toting this as a miniature surveillance aircraft. I have to kind of laugh a little bit because um, what is what do uh, what does the military do in the first things during any type of conflict? They take the power grid out, <laughs> so there's no would be no power lines to perch on. So uh, this was an MIT thing, so we'll, we'll see. But a uh, pretty cool little video. I have it linked up for you to, uh, to check out here. Here on Gizmodo, you hear about Darth Vader robbing a bank? <laughs> well, if you, uh, you know, first of all, you see somebody walk into a bank in a Darth Vader outfit, you would call the police, right? Well, this guy robbed a bank in New York um, with, a, uh, with Darth Vader. You know, can you hand over? The money. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, I know some folks that do some YouTube videos and stuff with uh, with Darth Vader. So I, 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 I hope it wasn't those guys. They're, they're great guys. You know, I did, don't get me wrong. So I, I know it wasn't them. But uh, what a way to rob a bank in a Darth Vader outfit. <laughs> um, over in, um, in Italy. A utility company over there has unveiled what they're calling the Arch Media. It's the first concentrating solar power system that uses molten salt for heat transfer. So what they do is they have molten salt that they heat up, and then basically it's it's capable of getting up to a thousand degrees, which in turn they use to boil water, which is driven steam to drive to drive turbines. So this goes on all day, and then when it gets dark. This uh, this molten salt is has a capability of staying hot for a long time, so that they're able to use um, power to the plant or get power out of the plant even after dark. Now they don't uh, talk about how long after dark, but um, this is the first plant in the world to use molten salts to uh, not just store heat but also to collect it uh, from the sun for for energy, and. Uh, the key to this is is that it has the ability to be able to um, really, I guess they say 550 degrees centigrade is the temperature that it can be uh, kept at. Um, so this is pretty cool. Um, we'll see how well this, we need to see more information on this. But um, 
they feel that uh, this is kind of a trade-off. They get a little more energy. Uh, they don't need the sun up as long. They get more energy out of the plant after it gets dark. So very cool uh, on their part. Have you heard about this flip board? Of course, I got my iPad down here, so I was going to load it tonight. But uh, big, big, uh, it's all CNN. It's on Fox. It's on Scoble started this a whole rampage of these people want to get this app. But, you know, hearing great things about it, it gives, a, gives you basically uh, information in a kind of like a newspaper format from people you know, friends on your Twitter feed and so forth. But um, the folks over at uh, Gizmodo have asked, is the... Uh, is the Flipboard legal? And the reason is, is because what they do is they go across your website and they essentially uh, scrape your website like a lot of other uh, readers do today. But they pull images off and then they repurpose that onto the Flip Photo or Flipboard uh, app. So, you know, a lot of the pictures that are on websites today are copyrighted and uh, companies pay for usage of those photo rights. So there is some question on whether or not the uh, the flipboard is going to run into trouble with uh, with copyright issues. So we'll see what happens with this. But um, a good question by the folks over at Gizmodo on uh, whether or not uh, this is an app that's going to be able to you know really stay in business. And the, the folks behind it are brilliant. And uh, when Scoble says this is amazing. Uh, amazing application. I'll take his word for it because he doesn't give that kind of an endorsement lightly. So um, I'll get it up. If you played with it, love to hear your feedback on this specific uh, uh, app, especially if you are a content creator. All right, you know, at and announced their earnings today, and guess what? Uh, killing data caps uh, really doesn't hurt their earnings. Well, of course, it doesn't hurt their, their quarterly results because they don't have to pay so much for bandwidth. And uh, they were able to post, uh, post I guess, a four-something billion dollar profit. Um, hey, you know, they, of course, four billion, billion dollars in profit. And while they continue to have major connectivity issues with their backbone and they're worried about people using too much data, yet they earn four billion dollars, four plus billion dollars. Wow. It says, highlighting a record 3.2 million iPhone activations, 13% higher earnings, and a sixth consecutive period of growth in postpaid average revenue subscribers. Now, it's six, the second largest carrier in the U.S. also experienced a drop in postpaid churn, with a 1.01% customer defecting to other carriers in the second quarter. Well, we'll see how many people defect or defect, <laughs> defect, defect from AT&T when uh, Verizon brings on their iPhone or T-Mobile, as also is being rumored. Hey, over on uh, Robin Goods Master New Media .org website, um, website navigation design: How to provide clear instructions and directions to your readers. This is a great article, and there's a few lessons in here that I could use. Actually, a few lessons that we implemented from earlier versions of GNC. For those of you that have been around a long time, you'll know that uh, GNC is now on its third revision. And uh, do you guys remember the old green, the pure green design, where everything was green, even the uh, green on black for the <laughs> I love that design, but people hated it. They the print was too small, but it you know it was one of those things that uh, needed to go bye bye, and it did. I probably have spent four or five thousand dollars over the past eight years, and you know keeping Geek News Central fresh and updated, but uh, that's the price of being online. Here we're on uh, YouTube. They're announcing uh, the availability of being able to find uh, music a lot easier on YouTube. And uh, so pretty exciting stuff that uh, they're doing in that space. One thing that we didn't talk about, and this actually starts tomorrow. Let me bring up YouTube.com. And this is, oh, come on, baby. Look, why did, YouTube just loaded funny on me. All right. So here's the deal. Uh, let me click on this so we can get over and I can tell you about this. Uh, okay, one day left. There, have you heard about this Life in a Day project? Let me bring this up for you. And, oh, here we go. It's going to pull. Oh, come on. And it's going to try to play again here. So what this is, let me bring this up in the uh, in the browser window so you can see that we're going to hear the music again. 
But what they've done is one world, 24 hours, 6 billion perspective. And what it is, Life in a Day is a historic global experiment to create a user-generated feature film short in a single day by you. On July 24th, that is uh, on Saturday, you have 24 hours to capture a glimpse of your life on camera, and uh, they want you to submit it. You're going to be able to submit it, uh, going to have a couple weeks to uh, to put it in. I'm not going to play this thing, it's a little annoying. But um, So what you do on Saturday is you get your camera out and film whatever you want to film. Keep it under 10 minutes for those of you that uh, have a just standard YouTube accounts. And uh, document a single day on Earth. This is sponsored possibly by LG. And uh, the winner of this, I don't know if they're going to have a winner or how they're going to work it out. But uh, they've got a, a special site where you can submit stuff to. There's full details of this at youtube.com forward slash life in a day. Now, again, this is Saturday, so this is a tomorrow. You need to, um, you need to be ready and shoot, uh, you know, shoot a video of what you do during that day. And I'm going to, since uh, we're, we pushed our beach day to Saturday, I'm, I'm going to take the flip camera and, uh, you know, probably do some beach shooting and uh, submit this to YouTube and, you know, if nothing else, be involved in the project. So uh, hopefully you listen to the show and hopefully you, you'll be able to check that out. All right, over on CNET, uh, Twitter finds West Coast is happier than the East. <laughs> and this guy that wrote this article, it's uh, Technically Incorrect is the blog. And this guy, if you're an East Coast, uh, if you live on the East Coast, um, you're going to be uh, angry after you read this article because uh, um, he is not very nice to, uh, to those of you that reside on the East Coast. But some scientists were able to uh, analyze 300 million tweets to uh, determine just when and where people are happiest and the saddest in the United States. And uh, what they found was that the East Coast was pretty unhappy. And there was this belt starting from like Illinois down through Washington, D.C. and onto the East Coast. Really, um, from Tennessee South was pretty happy and from really the Mississippi East was pretty happy. But uh, the East Coast definitely has this... Uh, you know, according to these scientists, is not so positive <laughs> uh, mood. And, uh, you know, I'm just wondering how they, um, you know, how many days did they review this to get this type of data? But uh, they've got several videos. You can see the churn over time. But uh, I'm sorry if this offends you, but they say that the people on the West Coast are happier. <laughs> you know, and having uh, lived both on the East, West, and then, uh, you know, in, in Hawaii and other places, I would have to say that people are much happier where the sun shines a lot. <laughs> and I'm not saying it doesn't shine a lot on the East Coast. And there are places on the West, like up in Seattle, in that area where it rains a lot, Um that uh, I ne wouldn't necessarily want to live, but are, are great places ir irregardless. But um, I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, this is this is a loaded question here. Um, but uh, interesting what Twitter has discovered and what they've been able to determine by people's moods. Um, virus writers are picking up a new Microsoft attack. Uh, the Windows attack used but recently discovered worm is being picked up by other virus writers will soon become much more widespread. And two new families of malicious software have popped up, both of which exploit a vulnerability to Windows processes .link files, which used to provide shortcuts to other files on the system. So we've talked about this a little bit before. Just keep your virus stuff up to date, and hopefully uh, Microsoft get this patched in, uh, in, in short order. Um, if you're a student, don't forget you can get Windows 7 Professional for $29. So you got kids going back to school. They need an upgrade of their operating system. Use that student ID, get that Windows 7 update for 29 bucks. okay? Don't forget that. That'll save you a lot of money. Same thing with Office, all the other software your kids are going to need for school for uh, um, uh, if it's uh, programming applications, if it's uh, Photoshop, they get huge, huge discounts. And also, you, if you go to the Mac, if you buy a Mac for them, student discounts too will save them huge money on computers at the Apple Store. And many places offer student discounts. So don't forget that when you're out there shopping for a PC for your college-bound student. Hey, have you heard about this a teenager that bartered a cell phone into a Porsche via Craigslist? This kid was smart. Um, 
And you know, you have to applaud this guy. He was given a, uh, a used mobile phone. And he traded that for an iTouch on Craigslist. And then he traded the cell phone for, or the iPod Touch for a dirt bike. And then once he had the dirt bike, he traded that for a couple of other dirt bikes. And then he got traded for a car. You know, basically up, up, up. And he kept getting better deals. And uh, ultimately, he ended up with a, a Ford Ranger. Oh, excuse me, a Bronco. And uh, he made a trade for a 2000 Porsche Boxster S, which he said was a step down from the Bronco. But he really wanted the Porsche. <laughs> And uh, so he rolls into school at 17 year olds with a Porsche and started doing it took 14 trades on Craigslist to get from this used mobile phone that a buddy had gave him to a Porsche. Uh, I would dare say that he did a heck of a good deal in bartering. And he basically said it was about luck, about timing, about knowing what he was going to get, inspecting the stuff that he was actually going to get trade for. And people have different needs and will trade different stuff up or down for stuff. And uh, uh, try that, you know. I'm gonna, I had my kids read this. My son Ray was like, Dad, you've got, you've got a couple of old iPods around here. <laughs> so it uh, might be a good experiment for, uh, for all of us to try. I don't know if we'll all have the same luck of getting into a Porsche, but uh, who knows. Hey, Netflix streaming usage jumped from 37% to 61% in a year. So it's pretty amazing if you think about it. 61% of Netflix subscribers are streaming movies digitally. And uh, a lot of them are going through devices like the Roku and other devices that Netflix is loaded on. Pretty cool stuff. Very, very cool. And uh, keep buying those devices that have uh, Internet TV built into them uh, because we'll be coming to those devices as well. Um, he announced today that uh, there's only a year left on the current uh, IP v4 addresses we talked a little bit about this uh, a week ago but uh they're saying that's just it with the massive growth we've got a year before we run out of ipv4 spaces and so people need to get busy implementing ipv6 so we'll see what happens hey the folks over at chrome are saying they're going to a 60-day release uh cycle so uh over the next few months they're going to be rolling out a release every 60 days or when it's a release becomes stable enough uh, they want to shorten the release cycle and still get great features in front of users. They want to make the schedule more predictable and easier to scope. And they re want to reduce the pressure on engineers to make a release. So 60 days is a pretty short turnaround period. So as you know, coders, uh, how long is it going to take you to do it? Oh, it'll take me a week. You just multiply that by three. If any of you ever hire a programmer, this is the golden rule. If they say it's going to take 40 hours to do something, it's really 120. <laughs> unless they're really good. Uh, most uh, programmers I have learned over the years cannot very well predict well, how long a project really is going to take. They end up down going down these rabbit holes and stuff. How many of you have found that to be true? Have you ever worked with a programmer? I'd love to hear your feedback. Again, geeknews at gmail.com, voicemail hotline is 619-342-7365. How many of you remember Tron? How could you not remember Tron? Tron was a movie that was amazing it was before it's time no one had ever seen anything like it got to have one of these keyboards it looks like a tron keyboard uh this is really it's it's just sexy it really really is um this is designed for the upcoming tron it's by razor and uh they're releasing a whole series of peripherals for to be released alongside the tron evolution game and of course tron legacy so if you're a fan and you like the, uh, this just, you know, this would look cool on the desk. Got to have one. I really do. They haven't listed the price, but it just, you know, it just looks cool. People are going to come over and see that, and they're going to go, wow. Oh. <laughs> Link will be up in the show notes for those of you that are, are listening. You can check it out for sure. Uh, article It was an article over by uh, rstetnica.com. Hey, Sony is facing a, a class action lawsuit uh, for its uh, removal of Linux from the PlayStation 3. That's a big battle that uh, is now, a bunch of lawsuits have been combined into one. Um, another thing too that's been detected in space is a sun that is, it's a, it's a sun that is 300 times the mass of our sun. 
and there's a good write-up about it. Uh, researchers have uh, went pretty gaga over this. This is the largest find ever. And um, got some other article here about uh, V Bulletin. If you're a V Bulletin, uh, if you're running that as a forum, you better uh, check for patches because there's a big hack out right now uh, for V Bulletin where people can take it over. And then there's VP has gone caught with her pants down and doctoring a couple of images. So, uh, you know, they wanted to look like they had more stuff on the screens than they did. And there was a helicopter image and all kinds. VP has been altering images and uh, have got caught by uh, those that are, uh, um, you know, really savvy and looking for this kind of stuff. Uh, Facebook has reached 500 million users. That means there's one in 13 people on the planet now use Facebook. That's pretty remarkable if you think about it. And uh, last but not least is a hospital in, in, uh, in Sweden is using a robot to fill prescriptions and it can do it faster than humans and you know have you ever went to a pharmacy and waited and waited and waited and waited <laughs> okay let me go ahead and play the voicemail here that has come in and then we'll get into the uh the emails from the last show so again if you have comments on the show geeknews at gmail.com geeknews at gmail.com voicemail hotline is 619-342 Seven three six five. Jeffrey is uh, saying on the uh, chat that the uh, keyboard. Oh boy, maybe I won't be getting that. One hundred and fifty bucks for the keyboard and a hundred dollars for the mouse. And I don't think that's gonna do. I don't think uh, we're gonna have one of those sitting on the desk. <laughs> cool or not, but two hundred and fifty bucks for a mouse and a keyboard. No, 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 no. Uh, that's not going to happen. That's not in the, uh, in the budget plan. All right. Anyway, here comes the first, uh, voicemail. Here we go. Whoops. Here we go again. Hey, Todd, it's Tom calling from Chicago. Hey, I hope Tom. you're doing really well. Good. Uh, thanks for putting out the shows each week. We greatly appreciate them here in the wonderful Windy City, Chicago, Illinois. Hey, I got a question for you. I sure. want to get your, uh, take on, um, what do you think of, social media networks, I'm not talking about Facebook, but some of the ones that you can start on your own, like Ning and uh, SocialGo.com. Uh, I just wonder whether or not you'd ever consider, um, you know, moving uh, the Geek News Central onto a, a social media site like that or creating it like that rather than the blog that you've got, or if you prefer to keep, you know, your website and, and, and your brand name under its own blog and under its own uh, news uh, information source. I know it's kind of a different way of thinking, um, probably not a way that you could monetize as you are now, but I just want to get your, your take on that from a from a new media expert. So thanks. I'll uh, look forward to your reply. Hey, uh, thanks for the question on that. And you know, uh, you know, I guess my thought is, and you know, I, I look at what Chris Prillo does. He's got his uh, brand. He has his live site. He has his Ning site. I wouldn't be against putting up a area on Ning for the show for people to go to. Um, my experience has been so far that, you know, we've, we've tried forums in the past and they've been highly underutilized. So, you know, and, and, you know, that can be as much as a negative as it is a, well, basically, if you go, if you, someone comes to the website and then there's a link on there to a forum and they go over to the forum and they see no activity, they're going to say, well, what is the deal? You know, the audience that listens to this show, um, I have learned, are very, very busy people. Um, they earn a very significant salary, largely. They are generally married with kids, um, not young. So their time is limited. And so from that perspective, um, there's not a lot of time for them to go participate on a Ning-type site. Now, if we could have enough folks that would be in there driving discussions and where we could refer back to it on a more regular basis, maybe. And that's something that, that I would be willing to explore. But uh, we've tried forums before, and it just, you know, it, it really didn't uh, go. Now, now that we're having a lot more content on the blog, maybe that would be a secondary option. Um, definitely would not move the main website. There's just way too much value um, even to move it to some of the new sites that are, are sucking in people's site. First of all, the, the to be podcast ready at the level that I need to be at and the flexibility I have to have really can only be served by WordPress at this time. There's no other platform that can do 
what I'm doing with the distribution, the way I'm distributing the show, um, is impossible. Uh, just to be able to do it right um, without PowerPress, my site, the whole podcasting thing would be would be hurt severely. Um, so I guess that kind of answers that. Uh, the brand is important. You guys know I don't use FeedBurner for the exact reason. You know, FeedBurner, I see so many people having troubles with FeedBurner. Own your own domain. Own your own website. Keep control of what you have. And uh, that way you don't ever have to worry. If you control it, you own it. It's your brand. You, you live or die by it. Um, you can still add this extra stuff. But, uh, you know, I've t done many, many discussions with media creators and saying control your stuff. Control, con con that's one of the reasons why we only offer media hosting at uh, Raw Voice. We don't offer like this siloed place to have your show. People that are having their shows over on Libsyn and their silo, you know, they're locked in. They can't grow. They can't change their website. They're constrained. It's the same thing if we would have someone be over on uh, Blueberry, they'd be in. We tried it, but we really it didn't it went against our better judgment. So that's why we kind of we eliminated that product and strictly went to the hosting, made it simple so podcasters could publish in three steps. They write their blog post, they upload to the PowerPress plugin on the website. Once it's uploaded, they press publish. It was a three-step publishing process. We made it so easy. That has been a big part of our success in, uh, in hosting podcast media. We just made it – we tried to make it really easy for the person that really didn't understand new media – but sadly, I see too many podcasters today going over to sites like, and again, these are, they, they do a great job for what they do, but you know, they get into uh, siloed websites like Podbean and these others, and they're stuck. You know, they're stuck. They can't get out of there, or they can, but it comes at a big price to their audience. Uh, no, would not move. I would consider running a, like a, you know, a social.geeknewcentral.com or something like that. That uh, would never move the site, but anyway, that's it. And again, you know, these other everyone has their own needs in hosting and their own goals. So you know, I don't want to say that my way is the right way or the highway because that's not the case. And um, but it's just my experience. We have to, I'm, I'm bailing people out of trouble all the time and giving them ways to figure out how to get back on the right track. So I have to live my own, you know, live my own message and. Uh, I, and just know what the keys to success are, and and uh, that uh, hopefully people replicate that. They can have the same success. I right, got an email from my mom, and she sent an email. She said, hey, Todd, did you know there's going to be two moons on 27th of August? It'll be uh, planet Mars with the brightest in the night sky starting August in August. It will look as large as a full moon to the naked eye. This will cultivate on August 27th when Mars will become within 34.65 million miles. Was it, hey, Mom, did, did you get snookered here? I, was this last year? It says August 27, 2010. It says this would be the closest approach until 2287. We're going to have to validate that, Mom, and make sure that that date was right. I thought we talked about this last year, but maybe not. Maybe this is good. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure it's not, uh, make sure it's the real deal here. Got an email from Phil. He said, hey, Todd and company, found you guys on Roku tonight. Just thought I'd say hi from Massachusetts. Phil. Hey, Phil, thanks for that. And, uh, Phil, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Geek News. I'm definitely going to follow you back as well. Got an email from Nicholas. He said, hey, Todd, sorry to ask about this, but I just want to see if you got a chance to mail out the Roku. Yes, Nick, your Roku went out today. So it is in the mail and on the way inbound. Got an email here from Trucker Tom. He says, hey, uh, Todd. Gazelle lands $12 million to buy and resell your used electronics. So it has this up, I have this link up in the show notes for you. Uh, got an email here from Jeff. He says, uh, hey, Todd, check out HP going forward with Slate. Talks about the HP Slate 500 over on the Engadget side. Thanks for that, Jeff. And uh, Jeff's out of Louisville. Uh, I got an email here from, uh, from Jack. He said, hey, Todd, you may already know about this, but I want to share an article with you. MP3 Tunes Digital Music Locker comes to the Roku. Yep, they've sent me four or five emails on that, probably because I've got a couple of these things registered to me. But MP3, MP3 Tunes, a cloud-based digital music service, is now available. And I guess they're giving you 10 gigs of storage or 10 gigabytes of music uh, to be uploaded. So this is pretty cool. Thanks for that, Jack. And let me look at the date here on this last email. Make sure I haven't covered that before. Nope, this should be another one. Uh, oh, I got an email from, uh, from Greg. 
Greg, uh, you had expressed interest in doing the uh, uh, be the Facebook uh, page, uh, basically moderator, and uh, we'll definitely be uh, e emailing you here shortly. Got an email from Dan. You guys remember when Wicked Lasers was a uh, um, a sponsor here on the show? He said, hey, Todd, about three weeks ago, I ordered a one-watt blue laser from Wicked Lasers, the one George Lucas is trying to ban. It was promised to ship in one to three business days, but nobody has received one yet. Some people have been waiting for six weeks now. Some people are saying it's a scam, and like others like me are waiting patiently for it. Well, last night, I, I and everyone else who ordered one got an email from them saying that due to a huge amount of orders due to press attention, they have to they have had to increase the price from one ninety nine to two ninety nine on July twenty third. So if you want one of these bad boys, you got to order it. Well, probably too late. So if you want one, now is the time to buy. It's a cool piece of kit, and I imagine the company is struggling to keep up with orders. They've been a sponsor here before, and I'm sure that uh, they're going to fill their orders. So uh, uh, thanks for that, Dan, and uh, I'll have this linked up too in the show notes. All right, folks, we're running long. Thanks for hanging out with me. Again, the email address is geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline is open 24 hours a day, 365 days in the year. It is available for you to call in, comment, slam, bash, leave uh, love notes, whatever you want to do. That telephone number is 619-342-7365. I want to thank you for hanging out with me. It's been my pleasure to bring the show to you tonight. We'll be back with you. Here's a special deal. Mondays, I'm going to record Monday's show during the daytime. It'll probably be going down around 6 p.m. Eastern. Both shows next week. We're going to try two shows during the daytime. It's going to be a challenge to uh, get the studio right. But uh, 6 p.m. Eastern on Monday is when I'm going to get started. So if you want to watch the show early, that'll be the time. Everyone take care. We'll see you next time. And aloha.